Shantae L. Henderson was just 25 years old when she landed on the FBI's most wanted list. Within hours of making it, she was captured. As part of the city's 12th Street gang, she was connected to a litany of criminal behavior. Shantae had a dangerous reputation. She was feared and she liked it. After murdering a man in 2006, she went underground. But before long, her gangster ways would drive her out of hiding and right into handcuffs. Murder, hiding from the police, and gang warfare. That's coming up on Ladies Love Crime. Shantae wasn't always a gangbanger with a gold cap tooth. In fact, she had family and religion, but somewhere along the line, she changed. Shantae's parents met in college. They were both school teachers. After they divorced, Shantae moved to St. Louis with her mother. She describes her mom as strict, saying, She used to be real hard on us about school. A teacher couldn't even call the house about me or I'd be in punishment. All she really wanted was for us to finish school and go to college. Her mom was also religious. Her best guess is that she was Catholic. Sadly, when Shantae was just 10 years old, she lost her mother to cancer. She then went to live with her grandmother, Doretta, in Kansas City. Doretta was a formidable woman. As an activist, she organized marches and demonstrations in the 60s and 70s. A fellow protester described her as a good strategist and a very intelligent woman. A local pastor who worked with Doretta described her as an advocate for justice who was involved in a lot of positive activities. For a while, it seemed like this good behavior was rubbing off on Shantae. The same pastor says when he saw Shantae in the street with her friends, they were very cordial young women, very respectful young women. Most kids couldn't ask for a better role model, and Shantae knew it, saying, Mainly, I would overhear people thanking her for something she did for them, telling her she was a good woman. I know she helped raise a lot of kids, a lot of grandkids. Shantae also grew up going to church, saying, We had to go to bed early on Saturday nights, and in the morning everyone would put on their suits and dresses. I never liked wearing dresses, not to this day. Shantae ran with the boys. Apparently, she was tough like the boys, too. A friend said, I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat a lot. Some people would let it go. She wasn't the type of person to let anything go. She'll fight a boy or a girl, no matter how big you are. She had family, God, and friends, yet no matter how much fun she had growing up in Charlie Park Square, it was still the projects. Even with the best of intentions, Doretta couldn't entirely shield her granddaughter from the harsh reality just outside their door. Eventually, Shantae dropped out of high school and turned to the streets. Trouble was out there, and she would find it in the form of the 12th Street Gang. But she wouldn't just be another gang member. She would be the gang member everyone knew about. She tried emulating Steve Wright, a ruthless member of the nearby 51st Street Gang. She might have been small, standing just 5 feet 5 inches and weighing 130 pounds, but she was feared. She favored assault rifles with 100 bullet clips. Everyone knew who she was and dared not cross her. But for all the terror she brought, It was the murder of DeAndre Parker that would land her a spot on the FBI's most wanted list, ranking right alongside Osama bin Laden. On a September day in 2006, DeAndre Parker pulled into a gas station. He went in to get cigarettes, and his girlfriend, Mia Bentley, waited outside. While Parker was inside, Shantae pulled in right behind his truck and got out of the car. Just as Parker was heading back to his truck, Shantae pulled out her gun and fired five rounds before running away. Parker died after suffering gunshots to his arm and chest. Shantae was identified by Parker's girlfriend from a photo lineup. After being charged with second-degree murder, Shantae went into hiding. She would reemerge seven months later doing what she did best, starting a gang war. In March the following year, a gang war began. Someone unleashed a series of drive-by shootings. After a week, one man was killed and ten were injured. The firepower was intense. An AR-15 featuring two large drum magazines that could fire 100 rounds without needing to be reloaded. Christopher Budke, head of the FBI's criminal enterprise squad in Kansas City, speculated two reasons as to why she came back with such fury. First, it was likely an act of retaliation. A rival gang testified against her mentor, Stephen Wright. Secondly, she could be exercising revenge after her two sisters were murdered in a drive-by shooting. 
Budke said that since everyone feared her, no one was willing to snitch on her to the police. In fact, out of all this gang warfare, police spokesman Captain Rich Lockhart commented that patrol officers were merely outgunned. Kansas City Police Chief Jim Corwin held a press conference to issue a warning to residents. He told them that there was a gang war taking place right in their backyard. Shantae was the prime suspect. Believing she wasn't in Kansas anymore, the FBI issued an arrest warrant for her the very next day. The FBI cautioned that she was armed and dangerous. Officers worked 18-hour days. They staked out a mall and a gas station after getting tips she was there. A community activist made YouTube videos saying he would help Shantae surrender. The former mayor used his regular spot on local radio multiple times to urge her to come forward. The hunt for Shantae was on. Everyone thought they knew something that someone else didn't. A couple of MySpace pages popped up that people thought Shantae created. Rumors were widespread. Some claimed she wanted to be a man, while others said she was a rapper. Before long, a new theory had developed as to why she started the war. Vigilante justice. Rumor had it she was killing a group of men who had gang raped her. When she was done, she would surrender. Someone said she shaved her head. Unfortunately, the police released a mock-up photo of her bald. It was very weird, to say the least. Another said she was in Iowa. That tip got her a federal arrest warrant. After getting word that she was hanging out in an apartment, more than 50 officers descended onto the complex. They waited six hours to no avail of Shantae. It seemed like Shantae had vanished into thin air. Police kept looking, but were turning up empty. Ironically, Shantae was caught on the same day she got listed on the FBI's Top 10 Most Wanted. Police were tipped off she was living in the Sycamore Hills apartments. Although she was believed to be armed and dangerous, she surrendered peacefully. She had them wait while she put on her shoes and asked if she could fix her hair first. Detective Joseph Marianella said although Shantae was the focus of investigations in other squads, nothing ever stuck. He further said, How long has she been in custody and she still hasn't been charged with anything new? That right there, sometimes knowing somebody's involved and proving somebody's involved are two entirely different things. Police Chief Corwin was left a bit perplexed, too. He believed she waged the gang war. He just couldn't figure out all the gangs that she belonged to. At trial, Shantae would plead self-defense. She says she didn't know Parker was at the gas station. When she walked in front of his truck, his facial expression changed. Suddenly, he started to drive towards her. She jumped backwards and thought she was cornered between the wall and the ice machine. Parker drove towards her again. She thought she was going to get run over or shot. As a result, she started firing at him as she ran past the truck. This feeling of danger might not be so unfounded considering Shantae and Parker's history. The following are a few excerpts from Shantae testifying during her trial. I glance and at the same time he's looking up. So when I jump backwards, I'm like cornered with an ice machine and just like a corner. So as I jump back and get in that corner, turns the wheel come towards me again, which gave me no choice but to pull out my gun and start shooting. What follows is a short excerpt of Parker's girlfriend testifying at trial. His attempt was too late by the time he realized that he made a choice whether he was going to attempt to try to save me or move the car. And he saved me versus moving the car. In 2003, Parker punched Shantae in the face during a fight about a go-kart. Later that year, Parker got shot and there was a rumor circulating that Shantae was responsible for it. She went to talk to his brother to deny the rumor. He didn't listen and instead fired a shotgun at her. The next year, Parker tried to run her over while she was walking through a parking lot. Even though she didn't see a gun on him at the gas station, she said Parker was known to carry one. Shantae pleaded not guilty to both charges. She was convinced she would be acquitted, but was antsy, saying, I don't think I'd even be normal if I wasn't nervous. If she really was innocent, you may be wondering why she didn't just turn herself in to police. Shantae believed they would shoot her. She said, Your mind just comes up with so many things. I kept thinking, how can I call them and tell them that I want to surrender when they'll just find a reason to shoot me? From day one, they was telling my family they'd open fire if they see me first. So I'm thinking the whole time that if they find me, they'll find a reason to shoot and they'll get away with it. I see how it happens on the news. 
There's a reason to believe she felt threatened. Officers hounded her family when they were searching for her. They tailed their cars and would show up to question them whenever they felt like it. The police said they were uncooperative. However, her family says they really had no idea where Shantae was. This constant barrage of police was so bad that her aunt had to move. She confirmed Shantae's suspicions, saying, The police told us if they saw Shantae and one hair on her head moved, they'd shoot her. Shantae was found guilty on both charges. In the end, she got off pretty easy. The judge suspended the 10-year sentence for manslaughter, only making her serve three years for armed criminal action. When she got out, she would just have five years probation to serve for the voluntary manslaughter charge. Shantae was a free woman. She had gone from feared local gang member to one of the FBI's most wanted, and she was even featured on America's Most Wanted. She was connected to more than 50 shootings. She only got caught for one, killing DeAndre Parker, and she managed to get a very merciful judge. She spent just a few years in prison and then only had to be on probation for five short years. Seems like Shantae had played the system and won, but old habits die hard. Just five months after her release, she was busted on a federal weapons charge. She pled guilty and was sentenced to seven and a half years. Circuit Judge Robert Scheiber also gave her a concurrent sentence of 10 years for violating the terms of her probation. The second time around, he wasn't so merciful, saying, I gave you every benefit of the doubt. You'll get no more consideration from me. Shantae will turn 40 years old this year, hard telling what she's up to today. But we might catch some insight from a jailhouse interview she gave to Pitch Magazine back in 2008. She'd been on the FBI's most wanted list, been a gruesome gangster, and was awaiting trial for the murder of DeAndre Parker. She said she was getting older, and if she wasn't in jail, she would probably be trying to make a baby, a son. I don't want no girls. I like baby boys better than baby girls. The only thing is, boys cry too much. She went on to explain her preference, saying, Men got it easy on some things. People will try to test a girl before they'll test a man. Shantae served her 10 years in prison for violating probation. She was released back in 2017. For all we know, she's out there raising a few little gangsters of her own right now. So what's the takeaway here? Well, if you ever find yourself on probation, don't mess around. Follow the rules. If you break them, a judge is merciless. They will throw the book at you every single time. On a sad note, let's reflect on how the FBI is probably a little bit racist. Do we really think that Shantae needed to be put on the FBI's most wanted next to Osama bin Laden? Yeah, they thought that she was connected to a bunch of gang crimes, but they didn't really have proof. The only one they had enough evidence for to get a warrant and charge her with was the killing of DeAndre Parker. And let's face it, that probably was self-defense. He had tried to shoot her or kill her or run over her multiple times before. Even the judge bought her story because he suspended her 10-year sentence for manslaughter. When all else fails, you can always rely on three things. Death, taxes, and that federal authorities don't like black people.